Hello everyone, semi-retired Bob here. I went from this to this in just a little under seven months. Stick around to find out how. I am semi-retired Bob. I talk about the carnivore diet, all things related to the carnivore diet, and a few other miscellaneous odds and ends as time goes on. I'm going to talk about a few issues today. I, uh, watch somebody's video of people that I've greatly, someone I've greatly enjoyed watching. And I think this person was dead wrong on a number of points. And we're going to get into that just as soon as I get some warm-up hiking in. I'm back on the Longleaf Trail today. I'm going around the campground and up the stairs and then we'll see from there how I feel as you can see I got a when I was on my way to the laundromat I stopped in and I went ahead and bought a smart water bottle not because I necessarily wanted the smart water but I wanted the bottle because it's a good heavy bottle I should say it's a good durable bottle that doesn't weigh a whole lot and it seems to be the choice of backpackers for carrying water on the trail with them. And it gives me just a little bit more water. So to, to compensate for the one bigger bottle, I only have one backup bottle in, in my side pockets right now. So the weight should be about the same. I didn't, I didn't scale my pack this morning. But, uh, yeah, it's just a little bit after 9 o'clock in the morning here. It's already 62 degrees. It's supposed to get up to about 70. But then it's supposed to rain all afternoon and into the evening. Which is why I wanted to get up and get out here. It is Saturday, but you'll be seeing this on Sunday. It's, uh... Pretty nice day out here. Not nearly as crowded as I thought it would be. I saw two people coming off the trail already while I was getting ready in the parking lot. And then another couple walking their little tiny dogs. I have no idea how far they went or where they came from, but. So I've seen two other groups this morning and the parking lot wasn't nearly as full as I thought it was going to be. So, at least on a Saturday, on a rainy Saturday, perhaps I can get out here and not be stuck walking around the laps of the church. And don't get me wrong, I enjoy walking wherever it's at. But this is just a lot nicer. And I think it's a little bit better workout in preparation for my long-term goal. But we'll talk a little bit more about that after I get this first section of hike in. So I'll see you guys on down the trail. See, here I am. Just like I said, I'd be like I was never gone. I'm all the way back down to the primitive campground. I'm not talking quite as loud as I normally do because there's a group over there in the site where I normally sit camping. Imagine that, camping on a weekend. But, uh, so everybody knows that I promote movement. Everybody I follow, Dr. Barry promotes movement. Coach Bronson promotes movement because if you're not getting some kind of movement in, why are you doing this? But, this person who I'm not going to name um, said that they cringe every time somebody says exercise is not required to lose weight because they say it's a half truth. No, it's a full truth. You do not have, have to exercise to lose fat. 
because you know when people say they want to lose weight they're not saying oh I want to lose muscle mass or I want to lose bone density so the next time I fall I break a hip they're saying they want to lose fat and my argument to this youtuber would be if exercise is required to lose fat how did I lose I don't even remember what it was the first 75 or 80 pounds before I even started my walking journey how did that happen I didn't leave the house I had my groceries delivered I walked up and down the stairs inside the house maybe twice a day how did, how, how did I lose that first great big pile of weight if exercise is required to lose fat? It's not. So you can cringe all you want. You don't have to have exercise. Now I recommend that people have exercise because exercise is very good for us in many, many ways. But the loss of fat is not one of them. Professor K does several good videos on this. So if you want some more reinforcement, go check that out. I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to attempt to explain the science behind it because I will get that wrong. But I can tell you from my N equals one experiment that you do not have to exercise to lose fat. The other thing that this YouTuber said, they actually said many things, but the one I'm going to talk about, I'm not going to make the mistake of sitting here too long this time, because I did that the last time I was out here, and my knees got stiff sitting here, so I'm going to just cover a couple of topics and then move on to the next bench. Um, but they say they cringe every time they hear somebody say, eating fat won't make you fat. Well, it won't. It is, I won't say it's absolutely impossible to overeat on fat, but fat is the number one trigger to your satiety hormones. And, you know, I've used the cereal bowl example many times, how you can just keep eating and adding to the milk and eating, and then, you, you know, you end up eating a whole box of cereal and you don't feel full. But with fat you do feel full at a certain point where you just can't you just can't eat anymore and that brings us on to the other one that this person said that they also cringe when they hear people giving the advice of eating till you're comfortably stuffed well it all kind of goes in the same vein if you're eating a proper human diet of at least one to one fat to protein, if not one and a half, most people do best at a one and a half to one or even two to one fat to protein ratio. That's just the way it is. That's the way our DNA is. There are the outliers that do better at one to one and even a little bit higher protein than fat, but the majority of the people do best at a two to one fat to protein ratio. And as I said previously for the other dumb comment, it is virtually impossible. I won't say it's absolutely impossible, but it's almost impossible to overeat if you're eating the proper ratios of fat to protein because fat does trigger your satiety hormones. Do this. If you're one of these people that can eat butter, just sit down and eat a stick of butter. See if you're not filled up. I think you will be. I personally, I can choke it down, but it's not one of my favorite things to do. Um, morning. morning. But you, eating fat will not make you fat. That's just not the way the body works. This person should probably go back to school and learn a little a little anatomy and physiology and biochemistry and some of the other stuff or just watch Professor K's channel because he's brilliant on this stuff and explains it all very well 
So you can stop cringing. Eating fat will not make you fat, and you can eat until you're comfortably stuffed, provided you're eating the proper ratio. Now, if you're eating a super lean diet, that may not trigger your satiety hormones. There are many, or if you're still sneaking a few carbs here and there, because you just have to have a few veggies, that may not trigger your satiety hormones. But you absolutely, there, I, I'm not going to say absolutely. It's very, very unlikely that you can overeat and that you will bypass your comfortably stuffed mark. And, you know, even if you do, I'm going to go ahead and, because they were really against priming as well, which I've never done really, but I know Steak and Butter Gal, her, uh, her groups do that. And you can go back and watch Bart K's, Professor Bart K's journey, where he did 15-day body recomposition, and he ate six to 6,500 calories a day and still lost fat. Explain that if priming and being able to, if priming is bad and being able to overeat on fat and protein makes you fat, explain Bart, Professor Bart K. And I know it seems like a little nitpicky thing, but I'm from this older generation where you know, even there's a lot of people, you know, running around calling, you know, Pastor Watford, Pastor Jason, and he doesn't seem to mind. And a lot of people calling Dr. Barry, Ken Barry, and Professor K, Bart K. I'm one of these people from, I guess it's a bygone era now, that believes people that worked for titles deserve to be addressed by those titles. Because you don't get to be a professor by going to an online school. You don't get to be a doctor by spending 15 minutes in class. You don't get to be a pastor by spending five minutes reading your Bible. They deserve our respect for their position and their title, even if we don't respect them personally, which I do all three of those I mentioned, but respect them very much. But even the current resident of the White House, while as a person, I can't say if I do or don't respect him, but I respect the office of the presidency. And if he came hiking down the trail right now, which would be really funny, by the way, he would still be Mr. President, regardless of your feelings about that. And I think that's what separates those of us who served and let's just say the the more hip generation that has never served they don't get that but that's completely off topic sorry I went off on that little rant there I'm not sure how I got there but that's why I continually correct myself if I say Bart K I will go back and correct myself and say Professor K because he deserves to be addressed by his title um, and that's all I've got to say for now. I've got another couple of topics that we're going to talk about on up the hill, but I've sat here for 10 minutes, which is almost too much, so i got to get up and get moving before my joints get stiff again. I'll see you on up the trail. Okay, here I am back with you again. That's the trail we just came across from the primitive camping area. And that's the way I normally go to the big steps. I have no idea where this section of trail goes, or how rugged it's going to be. So we're going to go this way and go exploring together. This could be a mistake. I don't know. These first few root tangles are pretty, uh, pretty impressive just to start the day. But uh, I don't know how much I'll speed this up or slow it down or or what, but uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and say cue the music.
Do you see there's the landing that I normally come up and there's the other way on up to the overlook. There's a big ton of people going up that way. So I'm gonna go down through these roots and back down to that intersection and head back over to the campground. It's gonna make for a little bit longer day, but as you saw, that trail wasn't super gnarly, but it was the only problem I had on that new section of trail that we'd never explored before was I'm used to having these big steps like this one and this one, but that one was so tall, I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to get up it, even with my trekking poles. But I did manage it, but wow, that was a big step. So let's go ahead and run just a little bit more music here. Okay, stop the music. As you can see, this is the spot where I just was before I started the music section. We went up that way, and now we're gonna go back over the connector trail to the group camping area. If I've done my math right, I should be really close to six miles today by the time I get back to the truck. But we'll see. But anyway, that was the whole new trail that I just did. I did the whole loop of the of the Spanish Moss Trail. And I'll see you guys back at the group camping area. But it'll be like I was never gone. Back again. I didn't write down exactly what this person was saying, word for word, on this subject. But the general gist was you need to take supplements because we need to have vitamins and minerals. Well, my, my, my response to that is, and I just did a whole video on this, so I'm not gonna belabor this point too much, not if you just eat fatty red meat. You don't need a supplement. There are a couple of little things that maybe, depending on where you live, you might have to supplement. And if you want to know all about that, you can go back and watch the video I just did a couple days ago about supplements. But my biggest question to this YouTuber is, I don't recall any GNCs for people to go to 25, 30, 50,000 years ago. So if fatty red meat is not enough to keep us alive, how are we still here? 
please explain that. Okay. <sighs> so I hope you enjoyed that new uh, trail excursion that we just did. I, uh, I said I don't know exactly how far we've gone, but I'll be able to tell you at the end of the video just how far we went total today. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I want to talk to you about. Yeah, if you're still here, go ahead and subscribe. Do all the youtube -y things. Click the like, the subscribe, leave a comment, share it out on your social media. That helps us get the word out. We're uh, now on the drive for 3,000 subscribers. Maybe we'll still get there by Christmas. I don't know. But uh, all I would, all I can say to that is that while more subscribers is nice, I want more subscribers if they're just like you people. I don't want people just to hit the subscribe button and then never come back. I want, I would rather have the 25 to 2700 engaged active members that I have than 10 or 15,000 people that just occasionally stop by and see a video. But, uh, that's all I've got for right now, but I've got a couple more points to make on up the trail. I'll see you when I get back to the truck. Hello everyone, the semi-retired Bob here. I did not get the ending recorded to this yet, um, so here I am. Um, total distance today ended up being 6.32 miles, um, so it was a little bit further than I thought, but it seems like a pretty good distance. I didn't run out of energy. Everything went pretty well. I, uh, you know, there was some uphill and some downhill with both steps and hills. So I got a pretty good workout in. And that my, that distance seems to be about the right spot for me right now. So I think I'm going to try to maintain that distance for a week or two and just hopefully improve my time. I did do it all in in two and a half hours today, so I made pretty good time on all of it as well. I hope you all have a great day. Don't forget to be 1% better, and I will see you tomorrow.